Congratulations, you just bought a mill or a lathe or some other hulking vestige of a bygone industrial era. But now how are you going to get it home? Let's take a look at how the pros move a mill. Buying a fantastic machine as good iron to use as a retrofit, or else scoring a deal from a closing or upgrading machine shop sounds pretty tempting. Or maybe you're just a collector. If you've got more than three machines, you've got a problem, man. Get some help. Still, good job landing the deal. But now, how are you going to get it home? There are really four difficult parts to getting a machine home. First, getting it into the truck at the seller's site. Two, transporting it down the highway. Three, once the machine arrives at your house, getting it off the truck onto the ground. And four, getting it from the ground into your shop and position. First, let's assume that the seller has a forklift, excavator, bobcat, whatever, something available to put it in your trailer. That's pretty common, so step one, done. Rolling down the highway, you might feel pretty satisfied with yourself. That wasn't so hard, you might say. Steps one and two, done. But then you arrive at your house. Now, how are you gonna get it off the truck and into your shop? For most of us DIY types, steps three and four are the hardest. Getting it the last 50 feet from the street into the shop. Getting it off the truck isn't rocket science. Rent a forklift, hire a tow truck, or rollback truck, use a gantry crane, there's lots of options. So fine, now it's in your driveway. Now what? There are myriad DIY methods to handle the problem from the point it's in your driveway to the point it's, it's situated in your shop. There's the Egyptian method, rolling the machine on bars and prying and pushing. You can use homemade machine skates, and I've got a video about that, links down in the description. Sometimes a pallet jack or pulleys, cables come along, or a combination of those, a gantry crane with a chain fall, or an engine hoist which, by the way, is seriously sketched. Sometimes some combination of, of that, those will work. It could even be as simple as just soaping up the floor and pushing along the concrete. Right, simple. If all that sounds a bit overwhelming, think of how great it would be to have professionals, hire professionals, and have it all done for you. Most of you watching this are of the DIY crowd, so why would you hire a rigger when it costs nearly as much as you paid for the mill, lathe, machine in the first place? One, because it's easy. You can watch them float your machine into position while you keep two hands on a nice hot cup of coffee and just watch. Two, they're safe and they have plenty of crew and equipment and especially plenty of experience. In fact, your machine might very well be the easiest thing they move all week. Three, they handle the transportation and one nice perk of that is they have a warehouse usually and they can receive your machine ahead of time if you've hired the transport and store it in their warehouse until the big day so that you don't have to pay uh, them hourly, which you do, while they're waiting for your machine or to arrive on a truck that you hired if the guy's late, which could happen. Four, they clean up the mess when they're done. They wrap up all the packaging materials and the foam and all the junk and call off even the pallets. Okay, let's just watch the move now. These are machine skates. They are very expensive, and this brand is Hillman Roller, but they work incredibly well.
I'll point out a few things as we go, starting with these rubber pads on the forks. They have a saying, steel on steel is no deal. It's a deal breaker because it's a mill breaker too. Steel is just too hard of a surface, so there isn't enough friction to keep things from slipping off. That's supported only by three skates. That's not a cheater bar, it's a handle that clips into the skates and allows the riders to rotate the skates even while they're fully loaded, effectively steering them. Notice how they point the skates all in the same direction for linear moves and they put them in a circle or at some other angle to do rotational moves. I've got another video about that, again, link in the description, that describes how you can do that yourself. See how easily the mill can be pushed around? Periodically, they reorient the skates when they want to rotate the load, and then they make them straight again for, for linear moves. I've got a video on DIY, affordable, you can make it at home, skates. Link in the description below. Let's see that again, 10 times speed. Just tape it three foot. Just taped it three foot. Hey Ed, you want to check the doors? Aside from writing the check, the hardest part of the move for us was putting down the blue tape. And that's saying that the move was easy. That's the advantage of hiring professionals. These are just machine feet, cast iron pads that the leveling screws sit down into. This is the toe jack and it's used to lift or drop loads in spaces where the forklift can't reach. I have a DIY version which you can see in one of my videos, link in the description below. The professional toe jack is not a hydraulic jack as you might expect. It operates purely, purely on hand power, mechanically. It's basically a compact version of a farm jack. Hey, Bill. <laughs> Ready? I'll let you know. How about now? Is it going to happen today? It's going to happen soon. It's okay. going to happen like within a minute. Okay. <laughs> Are you guys trying to say dollar waiting on a dime or something? Yeah, that too. <laughs> Dollar waiting on a dime basically means one guy's paid more and he's waiting for the lower paid guy, so hurry up. I love their sense of humor. They're experts and professionals, but they're also down to earth and they're great guys to hang out with. It's actually a dime waiting on a dime in this case. <laughs> <laughs> or dollar waiting on a dollar. You guys aren't cheap. I'm in the dip. Yes, we are. You are? The boss, it ain't. <laughs> Come on up. Oh, thanks, Bill. Sure. Notice the ratcheting? 
the motion is purely mechanical and the toe jack allows you to control the load as you're lifting it up and carefully, controllably, reliably put the load back down. Get it that way. Alright, we're on the feet. Now the mill settles into place and gets a final polish to remove any greasy handprints that they might have left. And then they pack up, clean everything up, and leave. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed tagging along, watching these rig professional riggers work. And I hope that you picked up a trick or two that you can use to make your machine move safer and easier. If you appreciate the video, give us a like, and if you want more videos about big machines and making stuff, including foundry and CNC work, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.